Okay, so yeah, KB has a question here about multi instruments. So it's asking, does Ninja Trader and Bloodhound deal with multi instruments in a strategy? So, well, I guess this is kind of a yeah, I guess this is a Bloodhound question first. Um, so this is actually kind of a two part question. You know, part of it applies to Bloodhound, and then the second part would be a, would be applicable to Blackbird. So I guess the simple answer there, KB, uh, is yes. Bloodhound can, well, I should say not Bloodhound can analyze, but you can set up solvers within Bloodhound, you know, that look at other instruments, right? So Bloodhound is handling the data requirements, you know, for other in instruments, for secondary instruments, for example, multi-instruments or the secondary instruments that Bloodhound is using. So if you take that Bloodhound file and let's, uh, you know, let me get something set up here. Here, let's pull up, let's open up Bloodhound here. All right, so let's, let's kind of create a very super simple example here. So I'm gonna just take the slope solver, add that on here. And then I'm gonna use the chart button here to add a secondary chart, right? And then you'll see that there's an instruments option. So let's see, my oh, let's see, my chart here is an oil chart. So how about, you know, if we wanted to analyze the overall markets. Um, so let's take a look at the ES market. And then also, I guess, let's take a look Let's take a look at the YM, right? So we got the S&P and the Dow's futures here. And so now I'm gonna make a copy of that slope solver and move it down. Make another copy of that slope solver and move it down. And so we can see that I've, I've got two uh, slope solvers here and they're running on the uh, ES instrument and the other slope solver is running on the YM instrument right so from that standpoint right you can have solvers running on other instruments um, as well so um, in this yeah you know in this example um, you know, just a little tip here. I'd recommend that the time frames match up, right? Um, things synchronize better when the time frames synchronize. So, for example, if we if we look at my chart, right? I'm I'm running. A, this chart is a five range, so you know, five range chart won't necessarily synchronize with a one minute chart um, all that well. So, right, just a little tip there. So I probably should change. Well, actually, five range charts um, from other instruments won't synchronize either, right? Range charts from multi instruments don't synchronize, but but um, yeah. But if I change my chart here that Bloodhound is running on to a one minute, so now everything will synchronize. There we go. Yeah. So, anyways, so now the default time time frame is a one minute, and so that's going to synchronize with the ES and the YM, which are one minute. All right. So, anyways, just a little tip there. Um, and then let's see here. KB is asking, um, how do you combine the two trending? Okay. Yeah. So, you've kind of your first question was about trending. All right. So, I just kind of picked you know, a slope indicator, right? That's a very simple way of determining uh, the trend of something uh, is looking at the slope of some moving average. Um, yeah, so there would be a basic example there. So yeah, KB is asking, so how would you combine the two to see if they are trending or in opposite direction? So, um, all right. Yeah, so before I go any further here, let's let's plug in a file name uh, for today's Bloodhound file, uh, Bloodhound template. So I'm going to hit the change button here, and that will allow me to change the name 
today's Bloodhound file name. So let's switch over to a, uh, the Logic tab now. And let me make a new Logic template here. Logic template name. Um, so let's add those solvers down here. So when I click on the solver uh, drop down menu, right, we're going to go to existing nodes. And you'll notice that there's three different time frames on here now, right? So the ES um, instrument time frame and the YM instrument time frame. All right, so what I'll do is just drop the um, nodes down here. Let me go add the other slope solvers here. And let's go to the YM and add that one down here. There we go. And let's give these, I should always give these solvers a name here. All right. Um, you know, I really didn't need to uh, name my slope solvers ES and YM because you can see right on top of the solver, it tells you, you know, that this, that this um, solver is running on a different uh, instrument and time frame as well. So that wasn't unnecessary, but... Um, but just trying to make a point here. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, see if they're uh, correlating together, that would be the job of a logic node. And so we'll use an AND node here together. So if I use an AND node, you know, that will tell me you know, when the ES and the YM are, well, actually, it'll tell me when the the SMA14, right, because both of these solvers here are using the SMA14 indicator, right, that moving average. So what this is telling me is when the SMA14 of the ES one minute chart and the SMA14 of the YM one minute chart when they're in agreement, then I'll get a short signal or a long signal. So if they're in a disagreement, right? So if the ES and YM SMAs are in disagreement, then we'll get no output like so, right? You'll see Bloodhound has no output. And let's see, KB is, oh, okay, here we go. So KB is asking, can you put these in the market analyzer? Um, yes, you bet. All right, so keep in mind right now, I've just got the ES and the YM hooked into this, um, hooked into this AND node here. So if, if we wanted to also um, hook in oil, I would need to connect that in as well. There we go. But let's see, let's just say you only wanted two instruments here. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let me slim this down to two instruments here. So I'm going to take out the YM here. And so we're going to keep this logic here to the default in instrument, right? The default time frame and instrument. And so remember, the default time frame and instrument is, is always the chart. Right, so whatever, whatever chart Bloodhound is running on, so, so basically this is going to be looking for the oil, uh, one minute. So it's going to be looking at the SMA fourteen on the oil one minute and on the ES one minute to see if those are correlating. So, well, at least for this chart here. Um, now keep in mind this this default. Um, this slope solver running on the default time frame. So if the default time frame, if I change it to the YM, then this logic will be looking at the YM and the ES time frames, right? So actually probably more people look at the ES. So let's, let's kind of switch this logic around a little bit here. Let's pull out the ES and put the YM in. There. So if I change my uh, chart 
to the ES, like so. <clears throat> right. So now the default time frame is now the the ES. So this solver is now looking at the SMA fourteen on the ES instrument. Right. So really, this this ES time frame is kind of un, very unnecessary, right? This is yeah, this is unnecessary at this point. Um, you know, so I'd recommend you know removing uh, this solver and this um, time frame here, right? Because you're just kind of um, this is just pulling in you know extra data here that's unnecessary and just it's just doing extra unnecessary work, right? So, but um, getting back to what we now have, right? So this default instrument, um, or this this solver here, the slope solver here, which is set to the default instrument, right, is looking at the SMA fourteen of now the the e the ES chart, right? It's looking at the ES chart, and then we have this other solver here. Um, that's running on the YM uh, one minute chart. So this is probably a little more practical um, if you're only wanting to just look at two instruments. So, um, all right, so with this kind of little example here, let's close this out. So uh, remember guys, whenever you, whenever Bloodhound gets closed, it saves your work back to the file, right? So it saves it back to the file. Um, so now let's pull up the market analyzer. There we go. And let's add the ES instrument there. All right, let's change some of these columns around. All right, so now we need to find the instrument uh, column. Add that down here. And then let's stretch this open a little bit. Oh, I had an instrument. Oh, remove that. Um, indicator. There we go. All right, I want it indicator. And now let's change the indicator. And down here, you can see that this list here is a little different. This indicator list is a little different than what you see from the chart, right? So shark indicators is actually on the bottom down here under the S's. So we'll add bloodhound. All right, so now First thing we want to do is load today's Bloodhound template. All right, so there it is, the workshop from May 2nd. Let's open that up. And now let's select the logic template. So there it goes, the multi-instrument logic template. That's the name I gave it. All right, and also you can see on the chart over here, Right, we can see the logic template name in the white area, right? The white pull down menu it says multi instrument example. All right, so there we go. Select your logic template. Um, and then let's see, the last thing to do is select the plot. Here we go. So with the market analyzer, you want to use the market analyzer plot. So basically, you know, uh, keep in mind, right, the market analyzer only allows you to select one plot um, for each column, right? So instead of selecting a long, the long plot or the short plot, there's a combined market analyzer plot. And let's see here, um, the next thing, oh, that's set up the data series. Uh, so yeah, one minute. All right, one minute, I'll work fine. And let's see, uh, days to load. Yeah, we only need to load one day or zero days, the current day, and that'll be fine. 
Yeah, I think that'll do it. Of course, you can set up your, your visuals and your conditions, you know, however you like them. So, all right, so that's it for set, setting up Bloodhound. I'm gonna click OK. And there we go. So we have a positive one. And let's see, yeah, one minute charts. Yeah, should always synchronize. Um, keep in mind, guys, that um, uh, if you're using such as like range charts, Ranko charts, um, the charts don't necessarily synchronize with the market analyzer. Just keep that in mind, guys. If you're noticing that you know your outputs from the market analyzer aren't syncing with your chart, then um, yeah, then I would suggest contacting uh, NinjaTrader support, and they can help you understand, you know, what um, they can help you uh, yeah understand how to get your market analyzer to synchronize with your charts here. So, but if we take a look um, on the chart. All right, we're getting long outputs, and so that would be a positive one value. All right, so a positive one um, in the market analyzer is um, just kind of like if you take a look at Bloodhound's output here, right? The long outputs are a positive value, and the short outputs are a negative value. So if we get a short uh, signal, that would be a negative one, and so in the market analyzer, we'd see a, a negative one.